Can I just share this with you? What lessons do we need to learn at Christmas? Well, are we forgetting someone? I mean, Jesus is in the manger and, you know, the Holy Spirit was upon Mary, but I think we're forgetting somebody pretty big, the foundation of Christmas. The foundation of Christmas is Father God. John chapter 3, verse 16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son. I love how the, in, in, the Bible says it, one and only Son. That whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. Let, let me just read this to you. It's so powerful. It goes, For God so loved the world that he gave his own, one and only Son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. Whoever believes in him is not condemned, but whoever does not believe stands condemned already because they, not God, have not believed in the name of God's one and only Son. Did you see that one and only Son? Twice he uses that. John chapter 3, verse 16 talks about the love of God. You know, I, I've been a Christian a long time, but once in a while I like to just sit down and stop. I mean, I've been incredibly busy, but once in a while, like this morning, I came into church really early. Very few people were here. And I just stopped, and I just sat here in the front row, and I just started thinking about the love of God. Father God loved me so much that he gave his one and only son. He could have destroyed this earth because there's enough planets in the universe without this one. He could, but he gave his one and only son. I, I want to share this with you. I'm not willing to give my two sons. And he, he gave his one and only son. Why? Because he loves us. The second key word is gave. I mean, Christmas is famous for giving. Do you know that 99% of the people in Japan don't know much about Christianity at all, yet they celebrate Christmas like crazy. And they love to give. The word believe isn't where, I, oh yeah, I believe in Jesus, you know. No, believe is where I accept him and he comes into my life. He goes from my mind to my heart. He's just not religious knowledge, he, he's a relationship. And then it goes perish, we'll never perish. And don't talk to me about perishing. I don't want to get on that topic tonight, but I hate to tell you this. In the shopping mall this week, I heard and so many people said, go to, you know where. And then he said eternal life. And, and here's where the confusion is. Everybody thinks eternal life is after you check out of earth. And eternal life starts when Jesus comes into your heart, into your life. Then he goes on and he says, you know what? God's not going to condemn you, but you're going to condemn yourself if you don't believe. And then he ends again with one and only son. Why does John keep saying one and only son? Well, because that's his most prized possession. Let, let, let me show you something that's incredible. The application I give to you on Christmas Eve is this, and it's really quite good. We need tonight to turn our believing our religious knowledge into believing faith. Where, where it's, it's from, you know, we're religious, we know all about Jesus, and you know what, you know, one day maybe, but not right now. We need to turn it into believing faith where it's a heart relationship. Now listen to me carefully if you don't know anything about Jesus, or maybe you do, but you don't understand people like me. I, I'm not religious. Matter of fact, I, I, I have a very hard time with religious customs. Now, I respect people of other religion, and, and I, I have the highest respect for them. And I love them very much. But, I, I, you know, doing five of these and seven of those and this and that and going into a box and telling this guy or, or, or you know, all my sins, I, I'm not doing that. But what I found out is Jesus didn't come to be a religion. Jesus came to be a relationship. When he died on the cross and he rose from the dead and he sent the Holy Spirit, Jesus comes into my life. 
So the question is, turn your believing religious knowledge into believing faith, heart relationship. How? Know Jesus in your heart. Ask him to forgive your sin. Ask him to come into your life. Ask him to touch you. Let me take you number two. Turn your love into God's love. How? Love through the Holy Spirit. Listen, there's many people that I have a very hard time loving. But the beautiful part about this is the Holy Spirit has helped me love them. I sent a text to some guy today. A few years ago, I really disliked this guy. But today I sent him a text just because of the love of God in me, wishing him a Merry Christmas. He sent me back a beautiful text. Thank you so much, Billy. I really do appreciate it. Merry Christmas to you. The old Billy without the Holy Spirit would have sent him a text, but it wouldn't have been very good. But the new Billy and the Holy Spirit, because see, I went from head knowledge to relationship, heart knowledge. I love this guy. This guy's got cancer and he's not well. And I just felt in my heart I needed to say, hey, Merry Christmas. Number three, turn your giving into God's giving. How? Give your best. God cannot do it through you. He's giving you freedom of will. Now somebody here says to me, what's the best thing I can give God? You. If I had $10 billion or $100 billion or a trillion dollars, giving that to God is not as important to God as giving me. He died on the cross, not for money, not to be a swear word, not to be famous. He died and rose again because he wants you and me. Number four, turn your life into eternal life. How? Well, let Jesus be, like Pastor Ed said. When Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and life. See, eternal life starts when, when Christ comes into my life. When I was younger, I accepted Jesus in my life. And all of a sudden, by faith, I didn't know how it was going to happen. I didn't know what would I feel like. But I started to change where I knew God was changing me. I never saw God. I never heard God. But I knew I felt his presence sometimes, and sometimes I didn't. But some of my friends recognized the change that was happening. And it was because the Bible says that Jesus wants to be the way, the truth, because Billy, before I had Christ, I was lying to myself. I thought I just needed me. I didn't need God, which was a lie. The way, the truth, and the life. And it says nobody comes to Father God except through Jesus. I, 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 love this, I love this part of the, the sermon where I tell you a little story. A few years ago, one of the ladies was telling me, and she doesn't go to our church. Matter of fact, I was talking to her on the phone today. Isn't that funny? I never even thought about that until now. She lives in Newfoundland. Her, her, her son, and her lived here in Toronto. And he, well, he wasn't the greatest. He was doing alcohol, he was doing drugs, he was even selling and buying and, and, and doing all these things. And every time she tried to talk to him about Jesus, he would say, Mom, don't talk to me about it. I don't have time for your religion. I don't have time for your, your craziness. I don't want your God. And what she did was she just started praying, God, let him come to know you. And over a period of time, he saw the change God was making in his mother's life, but then he saw it see change that God was making in other people's lives. And he started to say, I need God. <laughs> he 
came to church one Sunday. He never told his mother. You know what he did? He was, he was a chicken. He said, Mom, I'll drive you to church today, and then I'll pick you up. So she got out of the car, came in church. Of course, she sat in around third or fourth row from the front, and he drove around the block, came in halfway through service, sat in the back. And then just before service ended, he jumped in his car and pulled out of the parking lot and pretended he's coming back in. So. Can I take you a little further? Down in the bottom of his heart, he knew he needed Jesus. But his brain was overriding it. And his brain said, don't give in to God. Eventually, he gave in to God. And that's exactly what he needed. He needed to have Jesus be the Lord of his life so that Jesus could be the way, truth, and life. You know, there's a lady who wrote a poem, and uh, I like the poem. I don't like poems very much, but I do like this poem, and I've asked Pastor Ed just to read it to you. It's by Deborah Belka, and the Christmas, it's called Christmas True Meaning. Just listen to these words. Let Christmas's true meaning rise up in you today. May you see the real splendor of Jesus' birth this day. May his beauty and grandeur cause your heart to sing. May the gift of his excellence become your eternal spring. May his majesty you behold with all dignity and honor. May the fullness of his truth glorify his heavenly Father. May the wonder of his grace reveal its magnificence in you. May the gratefulness you feel be in all you say and do. Let Christmas's true meaning bring your Savior near today. May you see the need for him today and every day. Hey, Charles Dickens says, I will not shut out the lessons that Christmas teaches. And then she turns around in this poem, she says, hey, Charles, here's the lesson. Let Christmas true meaning bring your Savior near today. May you see the need for him today and every day. You know what the lesson of Christmas is? You know what the true meaning of Christmas is? The true meaning of Christmas is let Father God, let Jesus Christ, let the Holy Spirit be Lord of your life. It's time to move him from up here into here. I was talking to a guy today and he, for many years, was running from God. He didn't even know he was running from God, but he was running from God. And today, he was telling me about the life that is so changed since he's accepted Christ. He said, you know, when I accepted Christ, I thought I was crazy. I didn't know what I was doing. I prayed the prayer the pastor prayed, and but then I started to just pray and read my Bible, go to church, and before I knew it, my life was changing. Before I knew it, Billy, he started to be Jesus, the way, truth, and life. You know what's missing in a lot of people's lives? Father God, Jesus Christ, Holy Spirit being the center. And I got a question for you. Is Jesus Lord of your life, or is he just religion? I mean, if you stood before Christ today, physically, could you say, Jesus, you're Lord of my life. Father, you're Lord of my life. Holy Spirit, you're Lord of my life.